Alright. Um, so it's December uh, 16, 2018, um, around 9.30 p.m. Um, so earlier, earlier today, I created a couple of video blogs for my drama blog on YouTube. Um, and I said that I wanted to create a new blog series on books that I've been reading um, to kind of discuss where I'm, uh, what I've learned for these last few years and you know, was able to accumulate um, knowledge and, and, and uh, make sense of, of life. Um, which I think would be helpful for everybody. And for those that have read the books, you know, that's probably the best. You can, um, but what I'm going to do here is actually read the books. There's only a few of them. And they're more like uh, like philosophy books or help, self-help books or, you know, like idea books. Um, not really fiction or nothing. Um, so... The reason is, like I told you that, and then uh, I think it'll help you understand where I'm coming from, and uh, for the people that don't read, you know, and I'm going to just, you know, when I read it, I'm going to discuss what I think about it. The reason I'm do using the laptop is the sound's not that good, and uh and it's blurry. Um, but I'm using it because my phone sound doesn't work good. So this is my best option. Um, <laughs> to start off with, I wanted to actually, because I watch a lot more movies and I actually do uh, um, read books. So I just I just watched uh, uh, No Country for Old Men or something. Uh, the Coen Brothers, I think, and that was a good movie. Uh, I was it was it was it was unexpected for me. Um, I watched it on YouTube, so I'm hoping the video's quality turns out good because I don't want to discuss this again um, online or whatnot. So, so yeah, so this is welcome to the to my uh, book reading uh, blog. Series. Um, but to start off, I'm going to talk about movies quick. Not really talk about them, I'm just going to show what I bought at Walmart. And this is because people kind of trip out on what I read or like are looking at it. You know? So, so the first one I actually found, and it was actually Blade Runner, the first one. I never really watched it all. I watched it. This is supposed to be director's cut, I think, but uh, I like it. Um, the second one was pretty good, but this, this one's actually, um, looks better. Like, I want to watch it. Like, I heard, there's, it's a classic, you know, and of course it's Harrison Ford, so, like, and, uh, homies, homies in there. Um, this one I already had, Speed Racer, and it's, uh, from the Matrix guys, brothers, and, uh, it's good, and the reason I already bought it already, but these are just ones that I have with me. Um, but this this one's good because it goes pretty deep into like the philosophy of corporations and whatnot and how they control stuff. But it's a movie, you know. It's obviously based off a of cartoon um, anime, um, but it's really good, and uh, and a lot of people. Gave it thumbs down, but I disagree. Um, then I'm, these are all the ones I just saw. Uh, are these you know the last a few of these most of these? Iron Giant is a classic that I watched long when it came out and I loved it. I thought it was different than the other anime movie animation movies from Disney and whatnot, and uh, I liked it. And I haven't watched it for a long time, so I bought it. Cause I haven't got a chance to sit around and watch it. I like owning movies because uh, I can watch them when I want and 
not worry about streaming it or not have to have it in digital world or whatever. Um, this one was a Walmart special as well, and it's the Book of Eli and I Am Legend together, which is kind of crazy. I don't know how these two movies, they're similar, it is true, in the uh, apocalyptic setting, but uh, two different movies, two black dudes, so I don't know what that means, but uh, great actors, both of them. And I just wanted to own both these movies because they were good. I thought I Am Legend is actually a better movie as far as uh, quality. Um, but Book of Eli was really good and quality of acting and all that. But I think Book of Eli was good um, in the actual plot, uh, the idea. Not really the execution of the movie, but... Uh, but the actual plot. I Am Legend, I feel, is was, I don't know if it's based off a book, but it's just, that, that book, that movie was just amazing. It was a great movie. Up there with Mad Max. Okay, so, the reality of what I'm going to be talking about here is uh, books. And I would start off like with Bible stuff and everything like that, but the truth is that I'm, I'm, I don't feel very, uh, uh, not to that level of trying to talk about Bible stuff um, in my current life of flux. So I cuss a lot, you know. I'm a, so I'm not gonna go there. Um, but I have read the Bible more than I've read any other book, and, and I do feel uh, like uh, there's so much. In the Bible, in the New James Version, King James Version, um, that is worthy to share. So I've been contemplating if I want to graphic novel, try to graphic novel it as I go. So I'm not sure. But this one is a good one The Four Agreements um, by Don Miguel Ruiz. And I think uh, a friend of mine, a lady friend, she, uh, a Native American lady, she gave me this book. Um, as they say, gifted me this book. And it's good. You know, a Toltec wisdom book. And this is an experiment um, to read this book for people. I'm going to try to read the whole book, which is actually a good one because it's pretty short. Like, um, But I learned a lot from it, and I thought it was great. And... Uh, and, you know, I'm going to read this liner here. It's called The Four Agreements. Um, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. And you can kind of see uh, a lot of similarities in other religions, especially, you know, the Bible. Um, so... The author is the current guy, you know, I saw him on a talk show on YouTube, like, so he's not a, he's not like a ancient author, but, um, but yeah, look into it, because I have, haven't all looked all, I'm not a super, uh, guy that, like, uh, looks at all the history of everybody's authorism and whatnot. So, anyway, don't take anything personally, is the second one. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality. See, that's very powerful because the understanding of that is, is uh, we all got our own uh, road that we're walking. And someone bumps into you. That's, we share reality, but, um, but they, you know, everybody has to walk their own road. Projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. 
Um, that is true. Don't make assumptions. This is three. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Um, communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and trauma, which we're all dealing with nowadays and probably forever. With just one agreement, you can completely, with, with just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. And the interesting thing with that is um, communication, you know, like to properly communicate with others. Like a kind word sets, uh, can calm wrath or, you know, avoid wrath. Um, basically, if you communicate good with people, then you'll find that uh, that most people have some kind of uh, their own, um, they'll be reasonable, or not always, but, you know, most of the time you'll find uh, people have a lot of misunderstandings about each other. Okay, so always do your best, fourth one. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best, and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. And that, my friends, is very true. Um, if you tried your best, you know, what else can you say? Um, and maybe you don't always try your best, but like I said, you know, if you're not, you don't got the gas in the car, you can't drive it. But uh, at least you try, you know. Um, put some gas in there and see where you get to. So I'm talking about the book as I read it, but really it's a self-explanatory book, but I'm just going to put my little two cents in. The bad, the thing is that I, I'm kind of nervous talk, you know, reading and talking. Um, but, you know, I drank a cup of wine and I got to go to work in the morning, so I'm kind of tired. I've had a full day. So I'm, I just really wanted to continue with these blogs and, you know, I just finished some music stuff and been trying to get some little bit of drawing. So, you know, trying to live life as well. So I'm just going to do uh, a few pages. I don't know how long uh, the chapter, how long uh, a chapter is going to take, but uh, I'm going to try to go through it. And the reason I even wanted to start this, um, I think reading these books during the day would probably be best. Because I'm actually not making my own thoughts, which is easier for me to talk about my own life at night because it's deep thoughts. But really, I'm just like reading a book um, that my brain's already fizzled out. But uh, I want, like I said, I wanted to start it off, and and I learned a lot. I now mean, I wouldn't be reading this book if I didn't learn from it, um, and highly recommended it. Um, acknowledgements, I would, okay, so he goes through his family and like all authors you know, talk about who they would like to thank and whatnot. Okay, so it also talks about uh, the author, Toltec, um, The Smoky Mirror. So I'm going to read the introduction. It's a few pages. Let's see. So, there you go. Oh, by the way, that's him right there. So, excuse me. Introduction to Smoky Mirror. 3,000 years ago, there was a human just like you and me who lived in a city surrounded by mountains. The human was studying to become a medicine man to learn the language of his ancestors, but he didn't completely agree with everything he was learning. In his heart, he felt there must be something more. One day, as he slept in a cave, he dreamt that he saw his own body sleeping. He came out of the cave on the night of a new moon. The sky was clear, and he could see millions of stars. Then something happened inside of him that transformed his life forever. 
He looked at his hands, he felt his body, and he heard his own voice say, I am made of light, I am made of stars. He looked at the stars again, and he realized that it's not the stars that create light, but rather light that creates the stars. Everything is made of light, he said, and the space in between isn't empty. Um, and he knew that everything that exists is one living being and that light is a messenger of life because it is life and contains all information. Then he realized that although he was made of stars, he was not those stars. I am in, in between the stars, he thought. So he called the stars in Tonal and the light between the stars and Nagual and he knew that what created the harmony in space between the two is life or intent. Without life, the Tonal and the Nagal could not exist. Life is the force of the absolute, the supreme, the creator. Um, man, the book I wanted to kind of show the book reading. Life is a force of the absolute, the supreme, the creator who creates everything. This is what he discovered. Everything in existence is a manifestation of the one living being we call God. Everything is God. And he came to the conclusion that human perception is merely light perceiving light. He also saw that matter is a mirror. Everything is a mirror that reflects light and creates images of that light and the world of illusion the dream is just like smoke which doesn't allow us to see what we really are the real us is pure love pure light he said um, this re this realization changed his life once he knew what he really was he looked around at other humans and the rest of nature and he was amazed at what he saw he saw himself in everything, in every human, in every animal, in every tree, in the water, in the rain, in the clouds of the earth, in the earth. And he saw that life mixed the tonal and the nagal in different ways to create billions of manifestations of life. Okay, so this is deep, man, right? I'm glad I made this again. Let me read it. Um, in those few moments, he com comprehended everything. He was very everything. He was very excited, and his heart was filled with peace. He could hardly wait to tell his people what he had discovered, but there were no words to explain it. He tried to tell the others, but they could not understand. They could see that he had changed, that something beautiful was radiating from his eyes and his voice. They noticed that he no longer had judgment about anything or anyone. He was no longer like anyone else. He could understand everyone very well, but no one could understand him. He believed that he was an incarnation of God, and he smiled when he heard this, and he said, they believed, they believed that he was an incarnation of God. And he smiled when he heard this, and he said, it is true, I am God, but you are also God. We are the same, you and I. We are images of light. We are God, but still the people didn't understand him. Okay, so this is interesting, this is important, because I asked my mom to read it and she was like oh that, she kind of got she was like that, that kind of blasphemy and which i understand and i understand when people like get christian biblical stuff is like oh you know people come and they believe they're gods and and uh and i've been dealing with that just because i the ego you know people people don't understand the language when i um and words are powerful. So when you say something in the wrong way, it is the wrong thing. So when people teach, and they teach in the language, like in the Bible, it talks about uh, thou shalt not kill, one of the Ten Commandments. But the actual interpretation is thou shalt not murder, to my understanding. And what that means, there's a, a kill and murder are two different things. To kill is it takes a life away. To murder, the idea is that it was um, uh, thought of 
that you planned it or it was premeditated. So the same thing with uh, what I think this author is saying, and this is my words and this is what I'm taking from it. Because when he said they thought he was some incarnation of God, he laughed and he, so he didn't believe him or he, you know, he, they didn't understand it. So what he's trying to say, I think, and this is like when the Bible says we are this children of God, God's children, and the whole thing with uh, why we're special in the idea of creation, other creations, um, we're made in the image of God is because we have the ability to create and imagine and you know like like if you look at this is um, this is why i'm reading the book is because i'm adding my thoughts on these philosophies that are you know important and to so i can communicate where i'm coming from in life um so the imagination and makes it special like say an other animals don't have the ability to to create as like we do and like art and science and you know we all the creations but art the imagination is is a special one and i partake in that um as a life um, journey to explore creativity in art forms and painting, drawing, writing. Um, so I believe that when God created the earth, like flowers and trees and and animals and humans and colors and sounds and you know all these things that we appreciate, um, rain, season. That was something, and it, like we we're created to also do this these things. and I think that's what he's trying to say is when we are God as well and part of God you know part of the you know when God created the earth he spoke you know, it was there you know like it was good so you know what is God uh, and God is a word that we use to describe uh, our creator which when they asked him with in the Bible, it says in Genesis, when Moses was asking him, uh, who should I say you are? He said, I am. And I am. I, that, you know, he didn't have a name for himself or herself or whatever. You know, the creator didn't have a name. So when the Bible writes about God, it's that is a term that wasn't there. Uh, that's a generic term, word that we use. That's not a name, and he didn't have a name, but we gave him a name or her name, whatever. Like, if you believe God is a man or a woman, I'm not sure, but obviously he's a creator, you know. So there is that interesting thing. I'm not going to get into, uh, you know, man and woman stuff, but uh, the God stuff is is. I don't think he's being blasphemous. Is what I'm trying to say. So. And there is stuff that is blasphemous that if you do say, hey, I'm God, that is, you know, that's not good. But, you know, in the first sentence, he's like, you know, we're part, I think what he's trying to say is we are part of God. You know, God made it. You know, we're part of the universe. And I agree with that. But uh, we're not God. We're not the creator. So, anyway. He had discovered that he was a mirror for the rest of the people. Um, a mirror in which he could see himself. Everyone is a mirror, he said. He saw himself in everyone, but nobody saw him as themselves. And he realized that everyone was dreaming, but without awareness, without knowing what they were really are. They couldn't see him as themselves because there was a wall of fog or smoke between the mirrors. And the wall of fog was made by the interpretation of images of images of light, the dream of human. Then he knew that he would soon forget all that he had learned. 
he wanted to remember all the visions he had had had. So he decided to call himself the Smoky Mirror so that he would always know that matter is a mirror and smoke in between is what keeps us from knowing what we are. He said, I am the Smoky Mirror because I am looking at myself and all of you, but we don't recognize each other because of the smoke in between us. That smoke is the dream and the mirror is you, the dreamer. And okay, this is deep, man. Oh, he even has a quote from John Lennon. Okay, I gotta. Okay, anyway, living is easy with eyes closed, misunderstanding all you see. John Lennon. That's the quote. That's the end of the introduction. I'm not even gonna go into the first chapter because, oh my God, like. This is why I made this video is because what I'm trying to say is that there's more, there's so much more. And I'm not trying to say I'm God or that uh, I have any gifts or that I'm better, that I'm more pure or anything. Because obviously you guys know I'm not. But I have gifts and I don't believe that they're bad or evil. I do believe that they're God stuff. You know? And uh, because I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best and I'm flawed just like you are and your neighbor is and everyone else that you've ever met and love, all your friends and family and stuff. And I'm trying to make peace and amends with everybody. I wish they would come meet me in that same place, you know, on the level. Because, but these laws and all these things that are happening in the world are choking out all the good and people. And sad, you know, I'm trying my best. I cuss, you know, I listen to rap music and I'll cuss and I'll say things. And But I know in my heart that there's a reality of the ultimate truth and the ultimate beauty. But I can't help but speak about all this other stuff that's going on. You know, there's real stuff, you know, when I, rappers and are not only singing about all the money and the women and the life that they're leading, they're singing that that is there, and they're they're speaking truth. What even if it's not at the level of, of being trying to be, they're speaking of their flaws as well as their what they want and what you know what's the higher highest level. But they know everybody's down over here talking about what they want, and so that's what the artist does, I believe, is speak. You know where we're at, you know, and where we want to be. Where we should be, or you know, like, so I don't see the as much. Sometimes you know, I'll skip over. There's lines and songs that I'm like, ooh, but you know, it's just what it is. You know, listening, it's like a story, and uh, even if I'm singing along or whatever, it's not that uh, I agree with it, but I acknowledge it, and uh, it's probably not good that I do, but I do. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to come and say I'm perfect, or even trying to be. Which I keep telling you, I keep saying, I want people to understand that because I'm not going to try to be perfect for anybody, and, and I'm as flawed as everyone else. But I'm definitely not uh, trying to destroy stuff or trying to be as uh, trying to better myself every every day, and also just being me. And I'm going to talk about this stuff, and you might, I don't know if, how I really feel about it, but uh, we will go there. But the thing that is crazy about it, about this stuff, is, uh, okay, this is weird. This is weird to me. Because what he said was the smoky mirror, right? Which, you know, is whatever, but it's the stars thing, right? Like, I read this a while ago, and I did trip out on the same thing. Um, when I read it like a year ago or so, about a year, uh, probably 2016, 17, but I had a dream, which I'm tripping out right now in 2000, like before I even left, like I had talked to my son's mom and, and Isaiah, my son, uh, 
2014 maybe. Um, and it was about a dream because all this drama was happening. This keeps happening, you know? Like, I'm not, like, crazy, dude. This stuff keeps happening. And I just read this to you. And I'm telling you, I haven't read that book since, like, a year ago. Or even longer. Because a year ago, I got to Oroville and I didn't read it. I just showed it to my mom. And a year before that, I had read it. Or when I, I think I was in San... I don't know where I was. In San Jose or... Or before San Jose. But it was when I was uh, in the Bay Area somewhere. And uh, I guess, yeah, I don't know. But it was, if it wasn't one year, if it wasn't two years ago, it was more than two years ago. But it was after I had this dream. And the dream was crazy. And the reason that it's crazy is because I just talked to an old friend, Dan Seward, and I know there's, he doesn't want me to talk about him and mention him and all, but really, like, I probably wouldn't have if he didn't, like, send me messages, and it's kind of weird, but, uh, I'm just saying my truth, man, like, I'm not trying to say that my truth is more than somebody else's truth, but it is mine, and I'm, I'm I gotta say what I gotta say, not because I want to, but because, because, man, I'm, I'm I got attacked, man, I got, like, thrown in the bus, and under the bus and kicked and, and like I felt people were trying to take my life and they did you know there was a lot of things that got destroyed that I cared about the most and I don't know who did it but it was a combination of a lot of different people and um, what I'm not cool about it I you know I speak happy and because like, it's not affecting me I'm not it's in me but I'm not letting it dominate everything that I do in life but it, I'm talking about it because if I don't talk about it on here like I will let it I will keep it in and uh, you know I don't know I do get anxiety like I get pissed off and I'm like oh but you know doing these blogs is nah, it helps me and writing and doing art but the blogs are better because I'm just saying straight what I mean I'm not trying to use metaphors or whatnot so anybody that has a problem with that, that's sorry. That's, your, that's no matter friend, foe, whoever you are. I don't really wish I don't even have no foes. That was I try to go through life without having foes, but uh, people want people come at you that way. And sometimes your your foes become your friends. Crazy, you know. Like it says, you know, people your haters are your are your biggest fans, you know. And I don't know what that means, you know. Same thing with family and friends. You know they can hurt you the most and they usually do so it's a, it's a tough life man we're all here tripping out on each other um so i'm putting this out there for for them for you guys and for the people that don't know me and uh miss all these misunderstandings like i said this book is good it's gonna get better but anyway so this thing this metaphysical thing that just happened keeps happening to me and, and I'm, I get I'm tripping out because it's not just me it's also it's going far like you know, people are responding to it before I even talked about it other people are tripping out on it too so it's not just me. anyway so to add to the collection of all these crazy things I don't know when the dude wrote it but there was a lot of similarities in there. But, okay, so one of them was, <laughs> so I had this dream that, oh my God, I'm not even, people make fun of my dreams, right? And this was one of them that I told Sarah in her house after all this stuff was going on and I, and I was just like, whatever, you know, but it was, it was, it was high, it was at a high level at that time because she had just gotten to another house, her her husband had broken up, and I'd, I'd go visit her, see her son. It was a nice house, but uh, it was just weird, man. I don't know. If my, my son was going through a bunch of stuff. He was like 15 at the time, 14, 15. And I just, I was pissed off. I didn't know what was going on, and uh, but I knew I was getting attacked and, you know, all this weird stuff. And uh, And told her dreams because I speak this is what I do I talk maybe too much but 
what I had said was, um, I don't even want to, I don't even want to go in the dream, but it's part of the, uh, anyway, so in the dream, I'm going to just say it like, okay, so the people at voice that I worked for down Seward is one of them. They had come, I was at this house and then they had came to the house and they were like something, something. They said something and I was like, oh, and I, they went to the, it was a back house and they were like, so they went to the back house. I don't know. I guess they stayed up and partied all night. I don't know. And the cops came, and uh, I was like, "What?" And then it was daytime, and then, uh, so, and then there was this whole thing with the water, and there was a tube that I was in this tube, and I don't know. If they got busted or what? And the cops were like walking with me, and uh, which I just tripped out because I just did see a cop. But that's not part of it. But maybe it is. I don't know. It's raining. It's hot and raining, which it was. And there was no rain in the dream, but there was water. There was a tube, like a floating tube or whatever. It's kind of weird, but I had painted that earlier, but I don't know if that was part of it. But that would have to do with the painting. <sighs> that was a mural thing. Anyway, so the thing, trippy thing in the dream was that, that I'm tripping out right now is because in at the end of the dream, there was a photograph. And it was nighttime. And in that dream, it was a Polaroid. And it was me and, and, and like two, three other people in the dream having a good time, you know, around a campfire, maybe. I don't know. Ooh, that's kind of weird. Uh, but there was no fire. I didn't see no fire. It was just like nighttime hanging out and camping or something. I don't know. But Seward was right there. And I don't know who else knew. But it was it had the whole dream had to do with like voice people, and uh, and I was in the dream, or I was in the picture, and I was like, there were stars there, right? It was, I was like had stars all in me, like I was made of stars. I don't know. And then when I told her this dream, they were like, what? And I, was, and I didn't know any of the drama really that was going on at the time. So I was just saying my dream. And this is like a series of dreams. Like these are the ones that came after. These are the ones that were like more relevant to the what was going on. But I didn't know. Like there was a few of these. And it, lately I think like, I don't know. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. I really think that there's some people that are either they put me under and like some Somehow, like, I felt I feel a little interrogated in my dreams. I don't know. If, I don't think it's subconscious either. Some, there's some trained people that are able to do, do some metaphysical stuff. And I don't know. It's kind of weird because they feel they're not dreams that I normally have. They're dreams that, like, have outside uh, influence on there. Like, kind of. I felt I feel a little manipulated in my dream, like kind of weird. But anyway, I'm not going to go into those right now because those are the ones I just had this year. Like, and there's been probably a couple, but there's whole whole realities of how people do their magic stuff, like voodoo and who knows what they do. But I'm not into that. My stuff is all natural. I don't know what these other people do curses and all this stuff i don't i'm not into that but I, i'm praying and i know god's taking care of me because i'm still alive and uh, and i'm doing all right so so i don't know i mean it's government stuff they have you know i'm sure they train people and like it's not a secret i'm a million hundred bazillion percent positive that they train people for exactly for that. And that's probably why they've, I've been fucked with. I, I believe. I don't know. But, um, you know, they don't go, like, you know, they even check out the Native Americans, all these cultures, and see if any of this is true. You know, of course, it's science. You know, break it down. How do you make fire, you know? And then they make fire. How do you... All this stuff. Anyway, so that's why I don't believe it's past the possibility of hypnotism and all this other stuff that they're, they've experimented with, and especially in World War II with the Nazis and you know, checking out the brain, what the brain is, and all the 
feelings, how to torture people with their feet, like, it just goes on and on, but so I'm not, I am definitely don't take the possibility of people trying to get in my brain here, but if they find, like, the only thing you're going to find is that, uh, that I'm a decent person, for the most part, like, I've, I've, that, you know, everything that I've been attacked with is, I don't know, that's why I don't understand, like, if they really knew, like, why are they, why, like I said, though, I'm still alive and everything, so I don't know. Anyway, so, the dream was the star thing, right? And then, that just happened, where I read that, and the stars, you know, I don't know, people were messing with me with uh, the idea of Back to the Future, right? So, when I was doing a mural, this guy's like, oh, why don't you paint Back to the Future? I don't know. Too many little coincidences and people saying little things here and there. So, I kind of was like, oh. Because like, in the movie, they disappear. So, they change the past and they change. And the story like, becomes, um, becomes a... Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So, the, uh, the characters don't have kids and then there's... So the kids disappear in the photographs if you watch Back to the Future. So so when I had this dream, I was kind of like, hmm, what does that mean? Like, is that Back to the Future stuff? Like, Because I always, like I told you, I always think of my dreams forever. And, uh, but in, but in my thoughts, I always knew that, um, that I wasn't disappearing in the dream, that it was actually made of stars. Because they were glittering. I don't know. I can't like explain it, but and that was it. So right now, when I just read that, I was like, "Whoa!" I just put those two together, and he just texted me last night. You know, which was weird, and it was all a weird conversation, like a like, drama. So that was a weird coincidence. Because I was planning on reading a book, I just wasn't sure which one, but it was going to be that one. I was contemplating if I should read the Bible first to start these off, but I didn't. So anyway, so this is 42 Minutes. If you watched this, I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to start trying to be as positive. I'm going to start trying to put into some of this positivity into these. Because that's where I want to go. That's where I'm trying to get to. But uh, I'm still also flawed. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Because I believe that there's something further that I might not be understanding. That, that I, I got to do what's right by me. And, uh, and survival, being a human, being a full human is important. And I don't believe that uh, trying to be holier than now or trying to being too perfect or trying to be all positive is is what you need to do in the, as a human. I don't believe that's possible, but I'm not that person. I don't know. Maybe there's people. I don't know, but I'm just saying that I don't want to be judged because I'm trying my best and I'm, I'm not going to uh, live up to the Bible. Um, as far as Jesus. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so this, that book right there said that, and that was kind of trippy. Um, and I appreciate everyone because it's what we are, man. We're here. And, uh, we're all getting older for us older folks. And, uh, life is an adventure. Anyway, I don't really got a closing for this other than that kind of tripped me out and that just happened. So, cheers and uh, till mañana. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Later.